Hello, my fellow warlocks. Do me a favor, bring it in. Everyone, bring it on in, gather around, take a knee. Okay, good. I wanna to talk to y'all regarding some of the recent changes happening in the final shape. We've had an interesting past few days, had the initial shock of some of the solar changes, made a few funny thumbnails for the lulls, you know, usual stuff. But with the dust settling, I wanted to take a minute and talk about two changes in particular, the Radiant Well changes and the Sunbracer changes coming next week. And to let you know that really all emotion, how dare they change our really strong things, feelings removed from the equation, they're not going to be as bad as a lot of people are fearing and we're all going to be fine for the most part. Why don't we start with Sunbracers, the fun exotic that lets us light half the room on fire while beautifully hovering above the chaos. The wording on Sunbracers in the dev article is a little bit weird. It doesn't give the total amount of seconds for how long your grenade will last. No aspect info included, so why don't we review? For solar grenade duration, I'm gonna go ahead and measure from the moment on impact on the floor to the moment where the final damage tick number pops up. Whatever Bungie's official way of measuring duration, I don't know what that is. My numbers might be a few frames off, but just use this as a general rule of thumb. Just a solar grenade on its own will go for around 4.5 seconds, give or take. If you add the touch of flame aspect on top of that, you'll get an extra two seconds or so, taking it to around 6.5 five seconds. If you have a solar grenade with no aspects, but have on the sun bracers, you get taken up to around 8.5 seconds. And with touch of flame and sun bracers together, total duration will be around 10 and a half seconds, give or take some frames. TLDR, right now, touch of flame adds two seconds and sun bracers will add around four. With the final shape though, sun bracers, as mentioned, is having its extra time reduced by two seconds. Therefore, final shape sun bracer numbers should look like this. And because no self-respecting Sunbracer Warlock would run that exotic without Touch of Flame equipped in the first place, the end result is that your nade timer will go from around 10.5 seconds total to around 8.5. Which, yeah, a little frustrating for sure, but by no means a death sentence for sure. There's also the reduction from the maximum amount of grenades you can throw when Sunbracers has been activated from 5 to 4. Which, again, yeah, annoying considering what was possible before. But again, definitely not a situation where we're chucking sun bracers into the bin completely. Why don't we talk about Radiant Well real quick? As mentioned by Bungie, Well has kind of a dual role at the moment. It's both an offensive utility for buffing your team's weapon damage and also a defensive utility for really keeping you alive. In the final shape, the defensive utility is getting smacked pretty hard. Not quite a Mike Tyson punch, but more than a wooden spoon to the back of the head for sure. It seems that Bungie's goal is to have Well function as more of a damage on the go type situation, which honestly shouldn't be that bad once players get used to it. Think of the Rolk encounter in Vow of the Disciple, finding ways to get damage buffed while also staying on your toes. Only difference is we stay moving in that encounter because we don't want to get kicked into next week. In the final shape, your Guardian will get Radiant for eight seconds after exiting the well. For those of y'all who don't know, in PvE, Radiant's outgoing damage buff is literally the same as well, plus 25% weapon damage. Meaning as long as you quickly zoom through the well, you're now damage buffed for eight seconds. And if you run out, just dip your toe back in the well real quick, bam, buffed for another eight. I'm assuming that that timer will also be affected by Ember of Solace, meaning after you dip your toe into the well, longer radiant than just eight seconds after leaving, but I guess we'll find out. On the defensive side, I've seen a lot of players recommend the idea of also bringing a Titan bubble to DPS checks and activating it behind the well. The goal there being to provide protection if needed and also get a void overshield trickled on over time from being near the bubble. I'm not really sure if I like that idea. Using two supers to recreate the effects of one might be a waste. If it were me, I'd much rather my team try to play well and stay alive while utilizing radiant damage and having the Titan player use either a Curious Thunder Crash or Pyro Gale Hammer for additional damage. Here's an interesting band-aid solution that I'm not going to claim will be hard meta in the final shape, but at the very least worth experimenting with the Stag. Stag gives everybody standing in the Warlock's Rift incoming damage reduction or DR for short. Last I checked, Stag's incoming DR factor is 25%. Not bad. You know how certain damage buffs don't stack and the game just takes the bigger number? Like back when Weapons of Light was 35%? Good lord, we were spoiled. And it didn't stack with well, the game just took the bigger buff number? Well, apparently DR stacks multiplicatively. Shout out to Mossy Max for verifying that info. You following him yet, by the way? I'm getting tired of asking. Taking a look at Stag's DR numbers right now and what the Radiant Well DR numbers will be in the final shape, and remembering they are multiplicative, here's what you could be looking at. 
at the stag could give you 32.5% DR against incoming boss damage up from Radiant Well alone, which is just going to be 10%, and 40% incoming DR against non-bosses up from Radiant Well's 20%. Here's two noticeable downsides though. One, stag won't activate on just popping the well alone. You have to drop a rift in a well in order to take advantage of that extra DR. That's kind of unfortunate because a rift is way shorter in duration than a well and also way smaller. Take a look at how much teenier the rift circle is inside of the well. Number two, putting on the stag means you won't be able to use other exotics often paired with a radiant well warlock like the lunifaction boots. I honestly might just start leaning harder into reign of fire, using good old icky dash to both zoom through the radiant well and refresh my eight second damage buff timer as well as to auto reload my equipped stuff. Either way, at the end of the day, yeah, these changes definitely will shake things up and require many of us to rewire our brains, but don't make the mistake of thinking Sunbracers or Radiant Well in general are flat out dead. I assure you they won't be. Please do me a huge favor and keep your eyes on this channel tomorrow around 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Trust me, have a good one. See you then.